let me tell you something about myself. I'm not an incredibly smart guy. The fact that I've even made it this far is somewhat baffling to me. I mean, I've got endurance, I guess. Not a terrible shot, either. When it comes to decision-making and thinking before I act, well, there's something to be desired there. While waiting in the classroom, I thought I was hearing something in there with me. Of course, I was already on edge, so this pushed me over my limit. I stood still, anticipating absolutely anything. And then I heard it. A sneeze. But my brain didn't register it as a sneeze until afterwards. At that moment, my frantic mind filtered it through as a threat. It had come from the closet in the corner of the room. So, like the jumpy idiot I was, I fired off a reactionary shot, busting a hole in the wooden frame. Yo, relax! Whoever was inside shouted. They kicked the door open, hands up in a don't fucking shoot position. It was a kid, maybe about 15. Oh, thank God. He's claimed upon seeing me. Cops are here. First of all, I'm not a cop. I responded. Second of all, get ready to run. We made too much noise here. The kid was confused at first, but it didn't take long for him to realize what I meant. We could hear whatever atrocity we'd been lurking in the halls now standing right outside, with nothing but a wooden slab separating us. I raised my rifle as it simultaneously busted down the door. It was... an unexplicable entity. I'd always pictured what I believed demons or aliens or whatever extra-dimensional creature would look like in my head. An understanding cultivated through exposure to movies and video games. Still, seeing something like that existing right in front of your face was enough to make the idea of staying sedentary in a room cut off from the rest of the world for the rest of your life not so bad. I can't think of any pre-existing creature on Earth to compare this thing to, so I'll just try describing it. A mass of pulsating, fleshy blue spheres joined together atop a mechanical, arthropod-esque body, with two bulky robotic arms ending in large claws. Surely some experiment gone horribly arrived, but I'm not sure why it was here, though. The kid behind me got a glimpse of it as well, rendering him utterly speechless. The robot centipede creature lurched forward, managing to slash open my protective vest like it was butter. Fortunately, the creature was also a glass cannon. I emptied about half my magazine into its bulbous head, busting open each one of its spheres. It reacted erratically, swinging wild and undulating its body, destroying the room in the process. I'm pretty sure I'd blinded it or something. Come on, kid! I shouted at him. We ran out of the room as the creature continued its destruction. There were a ton of questions swirled around my head, of course. The main one being where the hell were we heading next? I took out my radio and asked the officer on the other end if things had settled down outside. No response. But from what I could hear, it sure as hell didn't sound like it. Where are we going? The kid asked. Beats me, I thought to myself. What are you still doing here? I asked him instead. Well, he began. I was in the bathroom when it happened. Okay, still doesn't explain why you didn't evacuate with the rest of them. Uh, look, I was watching YouTube in there with my headphones on. I just didn't hear anything, right? When I came out, everybody was gone, and I was hearing some weird shit coming from near the entrance, so I found a place and hid. It happens, you know. Does it really? I thought. But I wasn't going to bother lecturing the kid about it. Not the right time or place. Also, I hardly cared, if I'm being honest. At the moment, we were stuck between a rock and a hard place. Inexplicable, unknown events were transpiring outside, while some kind of creature feature ritual fest was going on inside. I reckon that we simply needed another place to hide until everything blew over. If it was going to blow over at all. I did have my silent reservations about it. I didn't want to admit it either, but... The kid being there made things so much more complicated for me. Yeah, yeah, I know, not very heroic. We turned a corner, almost running into somebody in the process. I had a mini heart attack as I began raising my rifle again, only to realize that it was another officer. I stopped in an attempt to talk to him, but the guy just ran right past us, with a near catatonic-like expression in his face. Of course, that could simply mean one thing. Something was chasing him. Begrudgingly, I took a peek down the corridor he'd come from, seeing a seven-foot, impossibly muscular humanoid covered in purple flames slowly walking towards us. 
The ground beneath cracked with each one of its steps. Where the hell are you going? You're just getting a preview of the new empire. Jesus Christ. I didn't let the kid finish his statement, dragging him away and pushing him in front of me as I ran. As we navigated through the halls, I was beginning to hear a chorus of voices come from the floor above. They sounded like the kids, but obviously not the regular kind. More so ones that had been transformed through the means of otherworldly rituals. Truth be told, I was actually planning on quitting the force sooner or later. I had the funds saved and a solid plan to go with it. I never wanted to be a career officer. And I just couldn't pull the trigger. And look where that reluctance got me. Right in the middle of who the fuck knows what. Eventually we found ourselves in another classroom, once again barricading the doors behind us. This one had windows, so I immediately ran over trying to get a glimpse of what was going on outside. But I couldn't understand what I was seeing. It was pitch black. I checked the time. It was only 4.30 p.m. I assumed the windows had been covered up, but the idea was quickly discarded when, through the apparent haze outside, a hand pressed up on the glass. A hand with a bloodshot eye in the center of the palm. It pressed harder, causing a web of cracks to form. At that moment, it seemed like there was nowhere safe to go. Nowhere to hide. I dragged the kid out of the room once again, only to find a colossal fireman waiting for us on the other side. He was grabbing the officer that had been running away earlier by the neck, choking the life out of him. I emptied the rest of my bullets into the blazing monstrosity, causing it to flinch only slightly. He chuckled, low and throaty, as he dropped the officer's lifeless body to the ground. <sighs> Guns are something, aren't they? She remnant of the old world. He stepped forward, throwing a punch directly at me. Despite using both my forearms as a crossguard position to block, the impact still sent me flying into the lockers, rattling my bones and singeing my uniform, along with the skin underneath. The kid screamed, darting away from the scene. A good decision at the moment, but at the same time, well, he was pretty much screwed. I wasn't in much of a better position myself, trying to find my feet after being staggered by a single punch. The firemen continued to approach me, eyes frantic, with a grin that was beyond deranged as the flames roared across his body. I was still trying to pull myself together as he got within a few meters of me. But then, almost out of nowhere, his head was cranked to the side by a swift blurry fist, sending him railing. I looked over to the adjacent corridor, seeing a brawny figure wearing a suit of black body armor and a skull-like mask. He stood there. Fist down stretch, with small purple embers resting atop his knuckles from the impact. Hey there. He said through the holes in his mask. I'm the backup. Did this guy just say backup? It was a bizarre thing to consider since I thought we were supposed to be the backup. And then again, stranger things have appeared. In fact, stranger things were actively happening. Backup? What backup? The armored beefcake ignored my question putting his attention back on the fireman instead. Not that I minded that decision to be fair. The fireman jolted back up, releasing a vortex of flames that nearly singed off my eyebrows. <laughs> the new world will have no place for fodder like you! This is- He was interrupted by another bulky fist being drilled into his upper jaw, rendering him immediately unconscious. The backup nonchalantly shook the flames off his hand, dusting stray embers from his clothes in the process. Weird how the cool looking ones end up being weak. Seem like a level 3 threat. Level 3 what? What is this? Who are you? I launched a series of feverish questions at him. Scratched his face through an opening in his mask. Hmm. If I tell you, I'm gonna have to mind wipe you. The response froze me for a second. And then he burst out laughing. Nah, <laughs> I'm kidding. I wouldn't be doing that. The suits would though. What? So, who are you? I'm Kaz, uh, US military. Holy Soldier Division, Class 2. What the hell did you even just say? He chuckled. <laughs> I wouldn't expect you to know about it. They brainwipe everybody who does, after all. Okay, I said, trying to compose myself. So what's going on here? Your guess is as good as mine, buddy. They call me up for weird missions all the time. They label them unique situations requiring divine intervention. Divine? Holy? What's all that shit about? He made air quotations with his fingers as he said the G word. Your abilities like what? 
As I finished the question, a writhing purple tentacle broke through the roof, dripping caustic liquid that dissolved the floor beneath. Hmm, that looks like a level six. He turned back to face me. You can stay and find out, but I wouldn't recommend that. It might get a bit hectic. I didn't take his advice at first, thinking that I'd die instantly if I tried going off by myself. I stayed and watched as the tentacle descended further, furiously wrapping itself around Kaz's torso. But instead of being dissolved, he began attempting to rip the appendage apart with his own bare hands. During the scuffle, a small drop of the liquid found its way onto my arm. It stung like hell as it seeped into my tissue, feeling like a boiling needle being drilled into your skin. As soon as that happened, I was out of there. But, of course, I still had no idea what was going on, or where I was going. I could hear even more commotion going on inside, including some kind of booming robotic voice, followed by the sounds of rocket launchers. Eventually, I found what I believed to be another officer, standing at the end of the hallway with his back turned towards me. Hey! I called out, half-whispering, hoping to draw zero attention. When he didn't turn around, I began walking towards him. About three steps in, the rational part of my brain began pulsating, causing me to stop to consider my situation. Yeah, there's no way that this guy's going to be normal, I thought. My conjecture was proved right when he turned around, revealing a mangled face resembling the rough design of a conventional jack-o'-lantern. He was also holding a glowing purple knife. The former cop let out a giggle so painfully unnatural to the point where it felt like fingers were running down my back. But I quickly realized it wasn't the laugh that spurred the odd sensation. Somebody was literally touching my back. I whipped my head around, seeing a tall, pale man dressed in a charcoal black suit with violet, swirling cyclones for eyes. Do you understand now? Do you sense your ultimate duty? He said to me, smiling like a lunatic. You too could be part of the new world as one of my messengers. Huh. Messengers for what? I asked, trying to stall for time as I inched towards an adjacent hallway to run down. For me, of course. The prophet. The new messiah. Uh, you know, I don't know. I stammered out, trying to avoid his hair-raising glare. Or I could just send you to hell right now. So turn into a demon jack lantern or die. Both fantastic options, really. Luckily for me, a familiar figure staggered into view a few moments later. It was Kaz, looking like he'd been through a meat grinder. Jeez, that was a tough one. He said, breathing heavily. He bent over for a moment, before looking up at the pale man. Oh shit, not this fucker again. The pale man's face devolved into an inexplicably malicious grimace upon seeing Kaz. A heretic calling himself holy. You dissidents should have killed me when you had the chance. Kaz sighed. Nobody's calling themselves holy. For the last time, that's just the title they gave me, you fucking idiot. The pale man let out an ominous chuckle before levitating. Do not take my name in vain, heretic. Kez looked over at me. Hey buddy, you better get out of here. I'm only going to be able to keep him occupied for a few minutes. This asshole's level 10. I still had no idea what that meant, but it sure as hell didn't sound good. In any case, I ran away from the situation as the two clashed behind me. As much as I hated the situation, I hated my weakness even more. Despite my grown resentment for the job, one thing that kept me going was the general perception of the SWAT as some badass protectors of the public. But I hadn't saved anybody since entering the school. In fact, the kid. God damn it, the kid. I was going to let him die here, wasn't I? Not that I could do much, though. I wasn't so safe myself, being chased by the blade-wielding officer. What did I spend all those years training for? I've been in life-or-death situations before. Did I run then? Fuck no! So why was I running now? Just because paranormal factors were being thrown into the mix? I laughed at myself, reflecting on my cowardice. I stopped running and drew my own knife. Time to deal with this myself, I thought. Time to become what the public thinks I am. 
I stepped forward as the demon officer rushed me. I managed to dodge his fist swing, giving me an explosion of confidence. I capitalized on the adrenaline rush, slamming my knife into the back of his head. But then the knife shattered upon contact and my heart subsequently dropped. The officer turned around, shoving me about 20 meters back. My whole body was stinging as I pushed myself back up. Yeah, never mind, fuck it. I was still trying to find my balance as the officer continued striding towards me. Like I've said before, near-death experiences were hardly alien to me, but in every previous situation, my life still felt like it was in my own hands, as if I had at least a marginal degree of control over my own fate. But at that moment, the prospect of death felt imminent. And it was the scariest moment of my life. As the distance between us continued closing, I spotted two figures turning the corner at the other end of the hall. I thought they were more of the creatures at first, but then I realized they weren't moving like creatures, and they sure as hell didn't look the part either. I picked up my pace, quickly stumbling to a stop right in front of them. It was a man and a woman, both appearing to be in their mid-twenties. The man was tall and built, sporting what appeared to be a mechanical exoskeleton over a tank top and cargo pants while the woman was more of a slender physique, wearing a thick jacket with tight black shorts. She also had a pair of large robotic goggles around her head. Whoa there, the man said in a wholly unfamiliar accent. You all right? Out of breath, I replied almost incoherently, simply pointing at the officer over my shoulder. The woman's expression remained stagnant as she drew a ridiculously large pistol from her jacket, firing off a round that caused my ears to ring for around half a minute. But when I turned around, the officer's entire upper body had been obliterated. Well, that'll do it, she said, her accent being the same as the man's. Now, maybe you can help us out, and we'll call it even. You see, we're looking for a dickhead named Trent Raisin. He also calls himself the Messiah, or something. He's got a big bounty on his head that we'd really like to grab before anybody else does. Now, have you seen him around? If you like this video, please consider subscribing. And if you're an animal lover like me, please consider donating to the World Land Trust, a charity that aims to help wildlife through buying land, preventing development, and helping endangered species.